your muscles have a superpower that you probably haven't heard of. They can remember. It's called skeletal muscle memory. And this type of memory can get you jacked. In your past, you might have built up your muscles to pretty incredible sizes, but for whatever reason, you stop your training. Many of us have experienced the dreaded muscle atrophy, and it sucks. But our muscles have this special superpower. If you get back into the gym, you start training again, you'll see this unfold in front of your eyes. Your muscles will grow way faster the second time you train them. You're gonna bulk up crazy fast compared to the first time. Your muscles remember what it was like and can do it better and faster this time. What the hell is happening? And can you capitalize on this? Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Naomi and I'm a chemical and biological engineer by training. In this video, we're gonna look at a special type of muscle memory that can help you grow muscle. Now we're gonna get into the science and go way down to the molecular level. So we're gonna break these videos up into multiple parts because there's a lot to cover. We'll meet the thing that's responsible for your muscle memory in this video. In the second video, we're gonna take a look at how this thing contributes to your muscle growth and atrophy. Now this is called the myonuclear domain theory. And we're gonna take a look at what that means in the second video. In the third video, we'll arrive at the molecular level of muscle growth. The secret to your muscle growth might actually be in your epigenetics. We're gonna see what this means for you and your training. So let's get into it with part one. What if I told you that these things are actually the key to your muscle growth? Well, this thing is a nucleus. Now you might recall from your biology classes that a cell contains a nucleus and inside the nucleus is the DNA. Your muscles are made up of a bunch of muscle fibers that contain these nuclei. Now, your muscle fibers are actually individual cells. So one muscle fiber is one huge cell. Now, what's special about these muscle fiber cells is that they actually have many nuclei, plural, within them. We're used to just seeing one cell with one nucleus, right? In this case, your muscle fiber is multinucleated, meaning that it has many nuclei within it. Now, the nuclei that sit within a muscle fiber are often called myonuclei. First, for understanding the naming conventions here, myo is actually Greek, and no joke, it means mouse. You'll also see the Latin version, mus, like in muscle. And yeah, you guessed it, it also means mouse. Now, why are we naming our muscles after mice? Well, apparently, a flexed muscle looks like the back of a mouse, or like mice moving under the skin? Ugh, that's a weird image. Now, why are we learning all of this? Well, this is actually where the magic happens. These little myonuclei are the key to getting muscle growth. These guys are the key to getting jacked. But how? Well, the myonuclei are actually considered the brains of a muscle fiber. They oversee large territories within the muscle fiber. And it's kind of crazy because they can actually move along that fiber to better distribute themselves from each other. So since they're more evenly dispersed, they can better serve the muscle fiber as a whole. Check out this actual image of a muscle fiber and the myonuclei within it. The red tube is the muscle fiber and the blue dots are the myonuclei trying to disperse themselves as best they can from each other. Now the myonuclei can also move to a site of damage and provide special instructions for helping that location heal. How are they moving? This is a diagram showing one of them using what looks like legs to pull it to the damaged site. These legs are actually proteins. Proteins are so important. They do basically everything. Proteins are like the machinery at a construction site. You could call them molecular machinery. So these little proteins, these little legs that are carrying our myonuclei are kind of like the car driving a supervisor through a construction site. Or maybe a horse, because they have legs. Uh, you can be the judge of that. Now, if you're wondering if this type of protein is the same as the protein that we eat, then you're thinking along the right lines. Even vegetables have proteins. Every living thing needs proteins to function. Basically, they're the molecular machinery that keep living things living. Now, vegetables don't have nearly as much protein as meat, which is why many people will tell you to eat meat if you want to build a lot of muscle. 
when you eat meat, you're consuming a large amount of protein. Now, this protein your body can actually use. It breaks it down into its basic building blocks. And then it uses those building blocks to assemble new proteins, new molecular machinery. It can also build new muscle. This is why it's good to consume a large amount of protein when you're wanting to build muscle. Your body needs the raw materials to actually build the muscle. So that's protein. Now, the myonuclei. What do these little myonuclei actually do? Myonuclei spit out instructions for how to build molecular machinery, for how to build proteins. This is how proteins are assembled from the raw materials that you just ate. Now these instructions, these blueprints, they actually float through the cell and specialized proteins actually can grab onto these instructions and start to read them. Now, as they read these instructions, they assemble the new protein in real time. So as they continue to read, more of the protein is being assembled. You're probably seeing that proteins are just about everywhere and they do just about everything. It's pretty wild, right? But there's one other thing you need to know about the myonuclei. Now the myonuclei being the supervisors that they are, know what's happening to your muscles and they can actually adjust how many instructions they're spitting out and what type of instructions. Now they can do this within just a couple hours of the original stimulus. For instance, if you go do a hard workout and you feel super fatigued and pumped, your myonuclei will recognize this and they'll actually change the type and amount of instructions that they're producing to better adjust for this intense bout of exercise. So they're recognizing, hey, we gotta start repairing this muscle. So they send the signals to help repair that and build it back stronger. Now this tells you something important. Your myonuclei are actually listening to what you're doing and they can respond by adjusting the amount of instructions and the type almost in real time and within a few hours of that event. Now, if you're still not impressed by this, just you wait. This is crucial and you're gonna see why in part two. Now we know how your muscles are structured and how they're maintained with these myonuclei. Now this was a lot of information, but we now have the foundations to understand muscle memory and the controversy surrounding it all. That's in part two. So go ahead and find that video and I'll see you there.